Shabbat Shalom family. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm so happy that you all are here on this new day, this new yom that the Father has granted to us today. It is so good to be with you. It is so good to be on this side of the dirt, as they say. We are so grateful for life. We're so grateful for the kingdom. We're grateful for the Father who is restoring us unto himself once again. It is amazing to think about the fact that for some of you, six weeks ago, six months ago, six years ago, you didn't know who you were. You didn't know. And now the Father has graced you to be able to remind you of your identity and your chosen status and is bringing you to himself by and through his son, through his Ruach. And it is a testimony for sure. So let us rejoice on this day as we realize just how much our Father loves us and how it is his good intention to gather the lost sheep, the house of Yasharal. Hallelujah. Yahuwah be praised. Yahuwah be praised. Father, we give you honor and esteem on this new yom that you've granted to us. I pray that your presence would rest here. I pray that your presence would abide here. I pray that you would be esteemed and you would be magnified. I pray, Father, that you would speak every word. I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase and that your son would be esteemed and honored in and through me. I pray that he be seen, his words, which are your words, be spoken. And I pray all things be done for the edification of the body of the nation of Yasharal and those Gentiles who are cleaving. And also, Father, that you be magnified, that you be seen. Hallelujah. Let your presence rest here in our in my home and the homes of those who are gathered here. Let them let them be honoring to the message that's going forth and let them be honoring to the vessel that you're bringing it through and let them be honoring to one another. These things I pray humbly in your son Yahusha's name. Aman and Aman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you that this message came about because I was praying and the father wanted me to start recording as I was praying. And I did record the prayer and I'm going to let you hear the prayer as the father begins to speak in this prayer, calling forth the 144,000. It's a prophetic word. So I want you to hear it. And I want you, if this resonates in your heart, if you would all feel like the father is talking to you, get into his presence and ask him, what would you have me to do? Okay. Ask him. Have you not seen? Have you not heard that Yahuwah has done miraculous and wonderful things? He causes streams to flow in the desert. He gives life to things long dead. He causes the dry bones strewn in the wilderness to come together, ligament to joint to tendon, to muscle, to bone, to skin, to organ, to organ system, to strong body, standing, strong, tall, resolute. Call for the breath. Call forth the breath. Call forth the breath of the Ruach to breathe upon the slain, those who are coming together, those who are standing, those who have flesh upon the bone. Call for the Ruach HaKadosh to come and breathe upon those who stand in my presence, those who stand before me, forgiven, cleansed. Call for the Ruach HaKadosh to breathe, to breathe, to breathe upon them so that I may pour out my Ruach upon them. Call for the Ruach. Call it forth. Say thou, Ruach. Ruach HaKadosh. Come forth. Ruach. Ruach HaKadosh. Come forth and be poured, be breathed out 
upon these who stand in my presence, these who make a covenant with me by sacrifice, these who have cleansed their garments, these who stand before me ready to do my bidding, ready to do my will, breathe upon them, fill them to overflow, allow them to walk in my ruach in power and might and authority, and they will do great exploits in the earth, and none shall be able to touch them. No one will be able to rob them of their lives. If anyone harms them, they must in this manner be killed. My vengeance and my judgment is in their mouths. My power is in their hands. They speak my words. They march forth like an army, a mighty army, under my dictates and my statutes. Under my direction, they march, they walk, single file. Not one of them is out of order, not one of them is out of line. They are obedient, they are thankful, they are honoring, they are my servants. And I have called them forth in this hour to be all that I desire for them to be. And they have surrendered, they have surrendered to the call. And they will receive. The morning star they will receive the high calling call forth the ruach to breathe to pour upon these my servants who will be strong and do mighty exploits in the earth halal yahuwah halal yahuwah halal yahuwah Thank you for speaking, dear Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Let it come forth as you have said. May all that you have spoken come to pass. Let those who have been chosen by the Father in this hour come forth. Let the anointing that the Father intends for you come forth. May you surrender May you surrender your life, your fortunes, your time, your money, your everything to the Father so that he can arise within you, so that he can use you for his purposes. Hallelujah. Come forth. Father, let your ruach pour upon those whom you have chosen and let them stand up a mighty army, 144,000 strong, to do your bidding in the earth and let them prophesy. Let them decree and declare, thus saith Yahuwah. Let them do it with boldness, without fear, without timidity, without shame. Make them victorious, Father, over every circumstance. And let them live to honor you and Yahusha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Most High is saying, come forth. He's saying, come forth. And indeed, that is exactly what needs to happen. But before we can come forth with fullness and understand exactly what the Father has for us, there is an admonition that he has for us. And the Father showed me this in a dream this week. And when I had this dream, I didn't understand what it meant. I had no clue. And I sat in the Father's presence and I said, Father, I do not understand this dream. Please grant me insight. And he did. He is so faithful. He's so faithful. So I put the words of the dream on the screen and I'll read it to you uh, at the dream. And then I'll tell you what the father told me regarding what the meaning of it is. And it's an admonition to us all, not just those who are being called to the high calling, but all of us. Okay. So this was November 22nd. It says, I dreamed that I was at a retail location somewhere and someone had brought me to this location in my own car. Someone drove me there in my car. And I went into this retail location looking around, spying it out. And I saw business transactions taking place. I saw people eating in restaurants. I saw people buying. I saw people selling. And I walked to the back of this establishment, of this large building with several businesses in this building. It could be similar to like a mall, but not quite a mall. And I was listening to someone talk, I think. And I wasn't sure what I was doing there. I left the building again and came back to where my car was. 
And I looked and noticed that there was a baby with a bottle in the trunk of my car. The trunk of my car was open. I have a hatchback. So I could see inside the, the, the trunk of the car and there was a baby in there. And the driver who had driven me to this location was about to leave to take my car back to, I guess, my home. I'm not sure where he was going to take it. But he was about to leave. And I saw the baby in the trunk and the trunk was open. And I looked at the baby and I thought, he can't drive that car with a baby in the back trunk like that. And I didn't have a car seat. I didn't know what to do. I, didn't know, I don't even know where the baby came from. I don't have a baby. I don't know where the baby came from. So I thought that if I secured the baby in the back trunk very well with a bottle, they'd be okay traveling in the trunk back to wherever the, this man was going to be taking my car. So I gave it the bottle and I tried to secure it. And then I was about to go back into the building and do whatever I was doing, listening to whoever I was listening to, whatever I was doing in there. And I thought to myself, no, I cannot leave this baby in this trunk. That's just, that's heartless. I cannot leave this baby in the trunk. The baby will get jostled. This is it's not going to work. So I told the person that had driven my car to leave my car and leave the baby, and I'll just take care of it. I said, you go, leave my car, leave the baby here. I'll just take care of it. Wherever you came from, you can just get yourself back to where you're going. Just leave my car and the baby here. So he kind of looked at me strange, but then he said, okay. And then he left. And even though I knew the baby was in the trunk of the car, somehow or another, I got lured back and was back in the building, listening to somebody speak wherever I was in this building, in the way in the back of the building. And as the person spoke, I remembered, oh my gosh, I didn't bring the baby in. So I ran outside and I got the baby from the trunk and I cradled the baby in my arms as I walked back inside the building, okay? And I walked to the back room where I was sitting previously and I put the baby behind me. I was sitting in a chair, like a folding chair. So I tucked the baby behind me in the back with the bottle and I was listening intently to whatever somebody was saying in the room. And as I was sitting there, the baby was making it known that it was not very comfortable sitting behind me, like it was being squished. It just wasn't comfortable. So I was trying to take notes as I was listening to whatever it was I was listening to. The baby was uncomfortable behind me, like it was being squeezed. So I moved the baby to the front part of the chair with me, like on my lap. And I'm still trying to hold the baby while paying attention to what was happening in the room and taking notes. It just wasn't working. So... It seemed like it was some sort of lecture or something I was listening to and, and listening intently and wanting to write notes down and trying to figure out what this person's saying and just really attentive. So the baby is now on my lap and it's being ignored, okay? So after a while, I realized that the baby was not getting the attention that the baby needed and it was uncomfortable. And I'm like, I have to take care of this baby. Just, I don't know who this baby is. It wasn't my child, but I have this baby now. I have to take care of this baby. So I got up and I left. So I thought to myself, I can't take notes in this retail location, wherever I am, and attend to this baby. So I had to choose. I stood up, I cradled the baby in my arms, and I walked out of the retail space. And I loved the baby as I was holding the baby and walking out of the building. I loved the baby. And I don't remember anything after that dream. And I woke up and I went, oh, my word, Father, what in the world is this? Why would I... Why would I leave a baby in a trunk? Why would I do that? I felt so cruel. Like, why would I do that? What is this? And I don't understand what this means. And I sat. I sat and I listened. And the father spoke. And this is what he said to me. Take heed, Yasharal. Take heed. He said, the baby represents our first love. The car represents our ministry. Ours was and is a ministry of worship to the father alone. And we, his people, forsook our first love and our ministry of worship unto the Father alone in favor of Babylon and its ways. That's what the retail space represented. The retail space in the stores where they were buying and selling represented Babylon. And he said, we engaged with Babylon and we left our first love in the ministry. We left the Father, our first love, in the car, in the trunk of the car. Not just in the back seat, but in the trunk of the car. We left him there. And we left our first love. And we took up with Babylon. And we were intent in sitting in Babylon's presence. Hearing everything that Babylon had to say. 
letting Babylon teach us, leaving our first love, this baby in the car. And even when we come to an identity, we realize who we are. We come to this awareness of our identity and then we take the father and we wanna have the father and Babylon at the same time. You can't have it both ways, you have to choose. So I'm in the, in the retail space, I'm holding onto the baby and I'm trying to take notes at the same time. You can't, you have to choose this day whom you will serve. You have to choose. He said, we allowed Babylon to teach us, to instruct us, to guide us, to provide for us, and ultimately to lead us astray. We have been engaged in the ways of Babylon and it's hard for us to leave. We've been trying to juggle our first love, our connection to Babylon at the same time. We want what Babylon has to offer and we want the most high too. We must choose to stay whom we will serve. The father is saying, come out of her, my people, come out, come out of her come out. He says, we have to cradle our first love and walk out of Babylon because it is bound and destined for destruction. And we need to take hold of our first love and get into our car, our ministry, and drive back to our homeland so that we can worship the Most High in Ruach, in spirit, and in truth. This is the word of the Father for us. Some of you are trying to have it both ways. Some of us are trying to have it both ways. We want the Father and we want Babylon. We want to be in their jobs and we want to have the Father's provision. We want to be in their schools and we want to teach our children Torah. You got to choose. It's time to come out of that nonsense, come out. If you still have your children in school, take them out. They're indoctrination stations, take your children out. Come out of her. The Father has been warning us and warning us and warning us. Some of you, the Father has told, leave that job and you're afraid because you don't think the Father will provide for you. You're choosing Babylon over the Father. You're choosing Babylon over the father. He's not pleased. And if we ever hope to attain unto any high calling, you have to make a decision. You have to make your calling and your election sure. Who do you choose? Do you choose the father or you choose Babylon? Choose. You have to choose. You have to come out of her all the way out all the way out, not even hanging around the edges because if you hang around the edges, she's gonna lure you back in. Come out of her. Revelation chapter 18. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven and Yahuwah hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill her to the double. It's time to come out. It's time to stop drinking the poison water. It's time to come out of her. It's time. In the same way that Elisha took his occupation, he took his occupation, he burned it, and he sacrificed it to the Father. The Father is calling some of you to burn your occupation your means of living, your means of making a living and hand it unto the Father as a sacrifice offering. Hand it over and trust him. He said to me, he said, some of you are hoping to make a living in Babylon. Babylon promises to give you a living. You can earn a living. He said, I wanna give them life. Choose, choose this day whom you will serve. You didn't think you could have it all ways, did you? You didn't think you could have me and Babylon, did you? You didn't think that I was going to allow the gathering to make the choice for you, did you? You must choose. You must choose to come out of her. You must choose. Some of you need to burn your oxen. You need to sacrifice it. You need to burn the wood. And you need to have it be a sweet smelling savor in the father than in the nostrils of the father. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. You need to come out of her. We all do. And all the ways in which we're depending on her, we need to let it go. The father showed me 
for a, a few months ago, I think I did a lesson on this last year. He said that his people, we were enslaved in Egypt. He sent us to Egypt to be enslaved, but Babylon lured us. So we were quote unquote set free by the Emancipation Proclamation, but it wasn't long before Babylon lured us. Babylon lured us and said, hmm, come integration, integrate with us, be a part of our schools, be a part of our churches, come be a part of our educational institutions and our financial institutions, come, we're, we're being lured by Babylon. So even though we went to slavery in Egypt, we find ourselves now in Babylon. How do we get there? We were lured there. And when the father comes to rescue us, he's coming to rescue those in Egypt, not those in Babylon. Those in Babylon are destined for destruction. So if you're in Babylon thinking you're going to be rescued from Babylon, you are mistaken. The father is coming to rescue those from Egyptian bondage, not from Babylonian captivity. You put yourself there. You allowed yourself to be lured into Babylon and you have to get yourself out. You have to choose to leave. The choice is yours. This is the word of the father for us today. This is a word for us. The father has a great calling for the nation of Yasharal. And the things that the father has in store for us, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. You have no idea, family, what the father has in store for you. It will make what Babylon has given to you pale in comparison. It will look like, like little marbles compared to what the father has for you. But you have to choose. You have to give up what's in your hand in favor of what's in the father's hand. Masha, Moses, I should have, he, he uttered a prayer. He said, would to Yahuwah that all of his people were prophets. That's what, that's what he prayed. Would to Yahuwah that all of his people were prophets or would prophesy. And I believe the father will answer that prayer. We read in Joel chapter two, Verse 28 and 29, he says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit, my Ruach upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. The father communicates to his people through visions, dreams, and a prophetic word. This is the spirit of prophecy right here on the whole nation. The whole nation, no one's left out, no one's um, not included, everyone's included. No one's disqualified here, except those who will not choose for the Father. They're disqualified. But those who choose the Father, all will receive a prophetic gift. Now, it may not all be the high calling, but it will all be the gift of prophetic on them. Dreams, visions, words of the Father. All are included here. And even the Gentile servants, will receive of his rock as he poured it, pours it out. So this is the word to us today. The father is calling forth his 144,000, but some of you have to sacrifice your oxen. Some of you have to let go of what Babylon has given to you so that you can take up what the father has for you. He will not compete. He could, he could compete with Babylon, but he won't because he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to compete. He is the one who holds all the cards. He holds all the power, all the knowledge, all the gifts, all the riches, all the wealth, all the anointing. He holds everything. We are the ones who need what he has. And if we forsake, he'll go to someone else. What would have happened if Elisha had said, uh, you know, I really don't want to leave my career. I think I'm going to stay right here the father would have sent Elijah to somebody else. The father always has a ram in the bush. None of us are irreplaceable. None of us. So if you won't, don't want to attain to whatever the father has for you, there's someone else who will. So make your choice and make your calling and make your election sure. So as a result of this message, your job now, is to get into the Father's presence and ask him, are you calling me forth? Are you calling me? 
Are you calling me to attain to this high calling? And if you are, tell me what you want me to do. Instruct me, command me, tell me what to do. Forgive me for choosing Babylon over you. Forgive me for putting my first love in the trunk of the car and going engaging with Babylon. Forgive me. I am your servant. What would you have me to do? You have to have a conversation with your father. He, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on this conversation. For many of you, this is going to be a heart to heart that you've needed to have with, to have with him for a long time. He awaits. Enter reverentially, enter into his presence humbly, and enter into his presence ready to hear what he has to say to you. Let nothing hold you back from this hour. Let nothing hinder you. Nothing. Seek Yahuwah while he may be found. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Most High for us on this day. And I'm thankful for it. And I'm thankful for him. And I pray that you have heard and will take heed to the things that he's saying to us. He's not playing with us. He's not. I want to give you this one last tidbit of information before we get ready to end for the day. When our ancestors were in Babylonian captivity, only about 15% of them actually were able to leave Babylon and go back home to Yehuda, back home to Judea. Only about 15%. The majority of them stayed in Babylon. They were lured by Babylon. They had houses and businesses and cars and lands, and they were doing quite well for themselves in Babylon, and they did not want to leave it, though the Father had opened the door for them to be able to return back to their homeland. And I pray to the Most High that we don't have a repeat of that travesty today because our people are so attracted and enamored with the bright lights and big city of Babylon that we forsake not only the high calling, but the return trip home. You have a lot to consider today, and I pray that you would consider it all in the Father's presence. This is a very serious and weighty word. Not only is the Father calling forth 144,000, he's also calling us out of Babylon, completely and totally. Choose the Father. Trust in Him to be your provider. Trust Him. Trust Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this word that you have brought forth today. And I pray, Father, that you would give us ears to hear you as we enter into your presence and ask you what it is that you would have us to do. Those whom you have call to the high calling, 144,000, Father, who do not know yet that they have been called. Father, give them a word. Give them the assurance of the call. Give them information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding that they do not currently have. And teach them, Father, to ask the right questions, what to ask of you and how to engage. Teach them and show them what you want them to do. And those of us who have been called to the prophetic anointing just because we are of the nation of Yasharal. Father, teach us how to use this gift. Teach us how to walk in the prophetic. Teach us how to be kings and priests. Teach us how to be set apart from this world. Teach us how to come out of all of its systems and be set apart unto you. Teach us, Father. When the world looks at us, let them see us as a city on a hill, separate and apart from all the wicked nations of the world. And let us be that. Let us be separate and set apart. Let us come out of all the wickedness in the world. Let us come out of it. And let us wash our garments in the blood of the Lamb. And let us be what you destined for us to be. You are so wonderful, Father. We give you all the thanks and praise and honor and esteem. You are worthy of our obedience. You are worthy of our everything. May we take the baby out of the trunk and may we put the baby in the place of honor. May we never again leave our first love. 
And may we never again abandon our call as the true worshipers of the Most High Yahuwah. For the Father seeks such to worship him, true worshipers, those who will worship him in Ruach and in truth. Hallelujah, who will be praised, who will be praised. Hallelujah. Well, I thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining me once again on another live session here on our Shabbat. And I pray that the Father has spoken to and will continue to speak to your heart as a result of this message. This is not a message to hear and then toss away. You really need to seriously consider the things that you've heard here today because the Father will hold us all to account based on the things that we have heard here today. It's being recorded in the annals of heaven. And we will hear this again, either for our good or for ill. So seriously consider what you heard here today and ask the Father to show you what he would have you to do. Ask him to show you who you are and what you've been called to and what mantle rests upon you. And whatever he tells you, do it. Do it. Ask him to empower you to do it. Of course he will. But do it. Do what he tells you to do. Okay? Hallelujah. The greatest gift that any of you could give to me is for you to walk in the call of the Father. To walk in the prophetic. To make the Father to make him seen in the world because the world has forgotten that Yahuwah Sabaoth exists. They've forgotten, but he's got to be seen again. He's going to be seen in his people. He is the hand, the invisible hand, but we are the glove. We make him seen in the world. So that means we've got to be like Yahusha and we've got to be about our father's business. We can't be playing around. There's no time for that. We've got to be serious minded. And we've got to take seriously the mission and the call, okay? He's calling forth those whom he has chosen, the 144,000 and his other prophets. So if the Father had intends for all the nation of Yashorel to be prophets before him, that means you've got a gift, some of you, that you're not using. You've got a gift unwrapped. You're holding it. It's unwrapped. Unwrap the gift and ask the Father to teach you how to use it. Some of you have been getting dreams after dreams after dreams and visions after visions after visions, and you don't know what in the world it means. It means you've got a prophetic anointing on you. Ask the Father to teach you how to use it. Ask him to teach you how to interpret. Ask him. We are a prophetic people. For the instruction that you need, ask him. He will train you. He will teach you. He will. But don't just sit on your gifts. If you want to give a gift to me, walk in yours. That could be the greatest gift you would give to me, to see you walking in truth, to see you loving the Father and preferring him and making him seen in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahuwah be praised in all things. And I thank you all so much for being here today. And may the Most High Yahuwah Baruch bless and keep you. And may he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom and shalom and peace in every area of your life. And at this time that we find ourselves, may you be dogged and determined in your pursuit of the lamb. Don't let the lamb out of your sight. Follow him wherever he goes. Keep Torah. Adopt the principles that have been revealed to you in the scriptures. Set about to be the people of the Most High Yahuwah, a prophetic people, a people full of passion and power and praise. Let us be the people of the Most High Yahuwah and let us make him proud in this earth. Let us make him proud. He is so worthy. Hallelujah. Shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters, and Shabbat shalom. I pray you have a most restful rest of your day. And Neahabata, much love to you all. Shalom.